So you know how when you travel, it can really throw off your wellness routine. Well, when Will wanted to drive across the country to Canada, that was one of the first things that came to my mind. So I put a lot of time and energy on how we could take care of our body and mind while we were on the road. So in today's episode, I'm going to share how we spent 24 days on the road driving cross country to Canada with our amazing dog Luna without eating fast food, getting an average of 6,000 steps or more a day while driving 8 to 10 hours a day, and not losing our minds. Pretty big accomplishment. (laughs) So this episode is a must listen for tips and tricks on how you can take care of your body and mind while traveling and on the road. And if you go to the link in the show notes, there's a special PDF that gives you a wellness on the road packing list for food and all the things you need to take care of your body and mind while you're on a road trip. Welcome back to How the Wise One Grows. This podcast is a space where we come together to reconnect to our inner wisdom, to one another, and to the natural world. But before we get started with today's episode, let's take a moment to land here together with three deep breaths. So just take a moment to notice where your body makes contact with the earth. And if it feels safe, you can gently rest your eyes. And take a big breath in. Fill your chest and your belly with air. Exhale, open your mouth, let it out. Again, inhale, chest and belly expand. Exhale, let it all go. One more, inhale. And exhale. And return to the sensation of where your body makes contact with the earth as you open your eyes and start to return to this space. Um, today, we have a very high honor guest with us. <laughs> and you've probably heard me mention today's guest in a number of episodes, but what you might not know is that this person is behind the scenes of really all elements of this podcast and my life. Can you guess who it is? Are you thinking about it? Are you thinking about it? Today we have my husband, Will Wright. And I felt like I really needed to call Will in today because we're going to talk about our road trip. So over the summer, we drove cross country from Virginia to Whistler, Canada to go on Will's mountain biking mecca of a road trip. And it was awesome. And being me, I was like super adamant about making sure that we were eating well and had time to move. And like I had this whole wellness road trip thing set up. And I feel like, Will, you thought I was like pretty crazy going into that. Can I talk now? Yeah, you can talk. Oh, oh, I wasn't sure if this was part of the introduction. Yeah, you can talk. You're allowed. Okay. (laughs) I wish you always asked me that. (laughs) I can start. <laughs> I won't ask you permission to sing, though. <laughs> oh, that would be That's so That's going to happen in the background. <laughs> um, so what was the question? I'm a little flustered here. I'm not used to being on camera in this capacity, so... <laughs> or audio. <laughs> I'm definitely okay. not going to listen back to on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so going into the road trip, you yeah. know how I was like... Food was the thing that I thought was like the most important because I was like, there is no way that I am driving. We were on the road for 24 days. I was like, I'm not doing that living off fast food. And like, I like to put good things in my body so that I feel good. And I feel like when we were getting ready for that, I might have like had a little bit of unrealistic expectations, but what what was your perception of that? I thought you were a little crazy with your planning, but it turned out better than I would have expected. But I think like some initial things you would plan for the road trip was like 
freezing soup in containers and then I still think it was a good idea putting them on the dashboard during the day while we're driving to <laughs> melt <laughs> and then or like and I don't know that yeah. I was not psyched for that yeah. but I mean I'm definitely weaker willed in that like I would have eaten been, Taco Bell I would have eaten Taco Bell yeah. every day if I was left to my own devices, but uh, I'm super glad I didn't because, you know, the stuff that we ate and the stuff that we didn't ate contributed to like feeling pretty good like throughout the whole, the whole trip. Right? And we had really long, hard days. Yeah. And I think if we would have added, you know, maybe some not so nice things to our bodies, that would have just like compounded the hardness like yeah. physically and emotionally really yeah do you want to talk a little bit about like what our days and our math was kind of like and then i can break down into the food and how you convinced me not to take yeah, frozen like... soup and curry on the road <laughs> i want the listeners to imagine that they're in the car with <laughs> me you and luna and our yeti cooler and mm. like what was our what were our days like kind of like booked it from here yeah. to portland so that was what like Five, five full days yeah. of five driving. Five days across the country, mm -hmm. full days of driving. Uh, anywhere from like eight to 12 hours in the car. Yeah, I probably. feel like that's what it ended up being yeah. that first stretch. And somehow during that, I was like, you know, I had my Garmin on. So I was like checking our my steps yeah. pretty much every day. And we had on the way out for sure over 7K steps a day. Which I don't really know how. I guess some of like some of the... We, walk, we had Luna, our dog, yeah. so we made sure to walk her and stuff. Yeah, so we would take her probably stops. on like a walk. At least, I feel like we tried to get her on a walk like most mornings we yeah. could. On our way out, we stayed at Airbnbs mostly, right? Mm -hmm. um, we had ambitions of camping, but that was just, with the way we were on the road, it was going to be too much. And then on the way yeah. back, it was more hotels. But at least the Airbnb stops, we pretty much were able to like go on a walk every morning before we left in some capacity yeah yeah and like in the evening if we were there yeah. early enough and then some of them were just like you know one on day night three i think we were in wyoming we were just which like, kind of can we tell them about that spot beautiful. in lander wyoming <laughs> yeah what do you want to say about it gosh i can give you I can give, give them you. the picture paint the picture well wow okay so flashing red and blue lights in the rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Holly's driving. <laughs> we were few... not having a fight. <laughs> yeah. I was not telling Holly to slow down. <laughs> and I was telling Holly to slow down. And like the hand of God, basically. I see as I'm telling her to slow down, you know, we, we see blue and red lights in the rearview mirror wyoming state trooper pulls holly over long and short he doesn't give her a ticket because because i am wonderful holly. if i was driving i probably would have been handcuffed and what did i did away. get i did get a good dinner recommendation. she got a good dinner recommendation from the cop which <laughs> dubious about but um so that that was like uh, two hours before our final destination in wyoming that evening and Lander, Wyoming is, kind, I think it's kind of like on the, the foothills, the Wind River Range. Mm -hmm. um, the landscape changes from like, almost like dry, high, deserty kind of rolling hills to like more like bigger mountains. Um, but also mixed It with, almost felt like Grand Canyon-esque to kinda, me. Kind of, but there was like a lot of greenery too. Yeah. But then there was like red rocks and like yeah, cactus. A lot of red rocks. Rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes. Like I was like a psycho when we arrived because we're basically in the foothills of the Wind River Range, Wind River Mountains, foothills of the Tetons essentially. And there's like red rock cliffs and we like drive through Lander and then into the foothills and it's just like absolutely gorgeous. It's that sunset, like the mountains, there's like no trees, but the mountains are like all like really like green, like it's almost like green grass all over the mountains. And then at lower down, it was drier and more like red rock and arid. And the sunset was, was happening. 
and we were on this like 30 acre property with like a cabin that just like looked out across like the hills and it was like super pretty and there were mountain bike trails next to the property which is... yeah which was like a total coincidence we didn't plan it yeah. that way well, we once... booked the airbnb and then we were like wait are these up against yeah well i think i saw that on the airbnb um, listing but... i found the airbnb though and i wanted to book it without seeing that yeah i mean it was a sick yeah. spot regardless of the trails um but i think that really helped us with getting movement in because a big part of the trip was biking right yeah. so like or on... just being active not i mean yeah biking was a part of it but we wanted <laughs> yeah. but we wanted to be active like you wanted to be really active you weren't doing as much biking but you wanted to make sure we we're in places where you could get on the trails yeah and could run and stuff and i guess the reason we're talking about wyoming because that's a good example of a place we like like chose because it was like in the foothills of the mountain there were like trails nearby um you know we woke up after spending the night out there we woke up super early the next morning i biked on the trails holly um ran on the trails mm-hmm. we kind of like met each other out there it was, it was awesome really really cool yeah. it was almost like moabby like slick rock that's what it was moab yeah yeah um She'll put a link to my YouTube video. In the oh, yeah. You can see Will's yeah, YouTube you videos that, in the description. The video of it. Yeah. Um, but that, I think, like, that was probably the first day on the road where we got to really yeah. move our bodies. Like, you got to go on a bike ride. I got to go on yeah. a trail run. That was honestly kind of, like, the first breaking point for me where, like, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then being able to, like, move my body that morning yeah. truly made all the difference. But even, like at rest stops along the way i remember like one rest stop like you were doing like push-ups yeah. up against the bathroom wall and like squats and i was like yeah. this is a good idea like well yeah when you're just like cooped up in a car all day yeah and then like at least for, for both of us for running and for riding mm-hmm. if you want to be able to like perform in that capacity mm-hmm. like your pregame for riding is eight hours in a car it, it doesn't feel good like yeah. you're not gonna feel the best so like any opportunity to like move around jumping jack squats yeah when we stopped and like every time we would stop gas cute. i would try to like give luna a bathroom break but she would never go to the bathroom no. but like just would be walking around during yeah. that time and like those are little ways you can like keep your blood flowing get your yeah. body moving and get more activity in than you might expect yeah. but i mean we we like intentionally cho- like we could have easily chosen a hotel or like an apartment downtown or something but like i feel like we're pretty intentional about like choosing places that were going to set us up for staying active and like yeah. feeling good yeah on the trip. and that was the most picturesque like not everywhere was like yeah. that but like planning ahead thinking about those yeah. things in advance i think moving your body when you're spending that much time on the road is such a key component yeah. um do you want to talk about the food with me the food that we ate along yeah. the way? Yeah. Yeah. That was like, so if you're listening, um, I have a PDF of like my food packing list, breaking it down into like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, what I would recommend packing on the road based on our experience. So if you want to get the road trip wellness guide, there is a link in the show notes. So just click that link, fill it out, and I will email you the PDF. And it has all the tips and tricks on what to pack and how to not lose your mind while you're on the road. I got super nerdy about it. I really love it. And I will not get on the road without it. So again, click the link in the show notes to get the road trip wellness guide. But first of all, I think the most important component was having a good cooler. And we were like super grateful yeah. because we got to borrow my sister and brother-in-law, Jada and David's Yeti cooler. Yeah, that was clutch. It was awesome. And it was like, I think it was like a 20 can, like a pretty small one. Yeah. Hard, hard, hard shell, hard cooler. shell cooler. But it kept everything cold. And we didn't stop for ice once. I just had like ice packs that I put at the base of the cooler and then filled it up with like... And each, yeah, each night we'd put the ice packs in, in a freezer or if we didn't have a freezer, which happened in the fridge. Yeah, and most nights it really yeah. was like in, in the fridge. Um, yeah. Yeah, so having a cooler where you can put things in, I found super helpful. And then like breaking, this was where I was like really good at planning, I thought, mm. was having things in like organized bags. I wanted to do boxes at first, but we realized that wasn't like 
space savvy. But we had like a lunch bag where I had like a couple um, cooler packs and then stuff for like PB&Js. Because like that's just pretty much the yeah. easiest lunch on the road. I always want a PB&J. And then for breakfast, I had pre-made um, these protein balls, mm -hmm. which like we eat them every morning, you know, like even when we're not on the road. I love them. And I'll have uh, that recipe for you in that PDF as well. Hard-boiled eggs. Hard-boiled eggs. Yeah. yeah. Those, I think, I couldn't have done it without yeah. the hard-boiled eggs. That was so Yo easy. Yogurt, right? Greek yogurt. Cottage cheese. Cottage yeah. cheese. Um, you want to talk about your green drink, Will? Well, yeah. Um, we. I mean, we've stuck. This is a habit we picked up from the trip, but mm -hmm. um, I'm sure since, you know, many people that are listening right now probably listen to other podcasts and, like, AG1 is a huge sponsor of other Which podcasts. is Athletic Greens. Yeah, Athletic Greens, which is a, a super greens like powder, basically, that you can just mix with water. And you, it has your daily serving of greens and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so we started, I, our cousin, thanks Andrew, gave us a <laughs> bag of it when we were out in Portland. And we started um, drinking that every morning. Like that would be the first thing we drank in mm -hmm. the morning. And we've kept that habit. Now we use um, Enzo Greens, which I think tastes a little bit better because it has some spearmint in honestly it. I think it tastes much better and yeah. so greens would love for you to sponsor yeah yeah the athletic greens kind of have like a bubble gum bubble gum weird aftertaste mm -hmm. it wasn't as like the enzo ones are like fresh like they feel good to drink yeah it's like minty yeah. and but okay. i do f i feel better when i give Happy. my body that those greens like yeah. first thing when i wake up it's like greens coffee for me tea for holly and then couple protein balls or mm -hmm. an egg or something and then we're good to go sidebar here i have a 10 percent off discount code for you to try enso greens enso greens actually goes by live it up greens now so don't get confused with that um but will and i have been drinking this green drink every morning since the road trip and it truly has helped so much we tried a lot of different um green drinks from Athletic Greens and a few others. And I really think that Enso Greens and Live It Up Greens is the best tasting one. And it has the best quality ingredients from the research I did. So I highly recommend giving it a try. Again, use the link in the show notes to get 10% off your first order. And that's like super easy stuff you can have on the road. And again, this is where I think packing was super key. Because yeah. like if you're traveling from your car and everything's in it you don't want to like take a million things into where you're staying each night so i had like a designated bag mm -hmm. in the morning that was like our morning things which was like the coffee the tea vitamins the green drink yeah. and then in the cooler bag i had like the yogurt the eggs the protein balls whatever um so that made like having the more i knew where everything was in the morning it was easy to get it i mean if we're talking about mornings i feel like we have to talk about going to the bathroom what? We do. Because that's a real thing. Like, okay. Like Luna or like us? Like us going to the bathroom. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like bathroom in general on the road, starting out. Yeah. If you're driving, long road trip, loves. Gas station has like the cleanest, I feel like most reliable bathrooms. And for your dog, they also, some of them have like little fenced in dog mm -hmm. areas. Dog runs, yeah, yeah, dog runs where your dog can run around. But I was taking magnesium the night, like two magnesium pills the night before, like every evening. So that when I woke up, my body was just like ready to go, be regular before we get on the road. And like you're waking up early, you're trying to yeah. get on the road early, so you don't have a ton of time. So for me, taking magnesium at night was really important. But I don't remember if you did that or not. No, I didn't need it. I feel I like you had more bathroom trouble than I did personally. No, I have bathroom trouble like... At the very start of trips, like the first like day or two, yeah, and then I'll get back on <laughs> regular programming. But yeah, but eating healthy like contributes to that. So like if we were eating like just yeah junk, it would have been totally different. It would have been different. Yeah, I know it would have been different. Yeah, I've been on enough bachelor parties and <laughs> food binges like that on trips to know like. It don't work. It don't work. <laughs> yeah. It do not work. Yeah. Yeah. I also felt like Ooh, on Chicago the- Chicago 2018. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I think 
one of my favorite things was what we did for lunch on the road. So like I talked about earlier, we had like mm. a lunch bag that had like, it was, it was also really fun. Like you can buy like a nice jam wherever you are or like a fancy oh, yeah. peanut butter, or, like local. a local yeah. bread. So like you're integrating parts of where you are on your yeah. journey to make that food feel, I don't know, it's more special. Um, so we had, pretty much had PB and J's every day, but we would try to find, and I think this helped with our movement too. We would try to find like a park mm-hmm. or somewhere to stop at for lunch. Nature preserve park, mm-hmm. state park, c- yeah. city park, just yeah. like somewhere green. Yeah. Somewhere green. It gave like Luna a chance to move around mm-hmm. a little, gave us a chance to move around and like enjoy scenery, be outside. So you don't feel like quite as claustrophobic and stuck when yeah. you're in the road on the road all day. And it was just cool seeing different parts of the country. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And not just like staring at 18 wheelers going down the highway. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was just, I just really enjoyed just kind of exploring. And it got me better at figuring out maps where to pull off, right? Uh, yeah. A little, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then. You forgot. What were your favorite snacks that I packed? I think I did a great job with snacks. I think you're really gonna want my list because I found some bomb snacks. Yeah, we had you had some good like some vegan, some dried like dried figs, dried fruit and stuff. I think we had like dates, but actually my favorite snacks came into play on the second day because we stayed at an Airbnb oh, yeah. in Kentucky and in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. The host, it was like a, a hosted one, so we stayed in like a little guest suite, and the the hosts were like super nice. They're probably our parents' age. I think they had kids our age, so they like really took care of us. They liked us and took care of us. We had a meal with them, but they gave us a bunch of stuff from their garden. So one of the things were the the green beans. Yeah, they gave like, us like a bag yeah, of these big old bag of green beans, fresh green beans. Did they give us something else too? Um. No, um, no, I think it, the main thing was the green beans. The green beans, yeah. So, like, having fresh veggies, I didn't think about that before the road trip. Yeah. But, like, green beans and stuff like that, you don't have to keep in the cooler. Yeah. Like, you can snack on them Just easily. Munch on them raw. You're getting fiber, like, yeah. you're getting protein, you're not feeling like. You can eat as much as you want. And yeah. And, like, it doesn't matter. We would even have those, like, for breakfast in the morning. We'd have, yeah. like, some almonds, some green beans, like, maybe dip it in your yogurt or cottage yeah. cheese. I mean, I, yeah. It was delicious. Yeah. I mean, they, these were especially delicious because they were grown. Yeah, like, they were in fresh. Garden, but, like, I would eat them from the store. Too. Yeah. And then if you can't get, like, the fresh ones, like, at different farmer's stands you might come across, like, when we were in um, Seattle, I got these, like you know, dried veggie snacks, mm. which were awesome. And then again, it's like another local element that like makes your food feel fun. Yeah. Um, but you got to be careful about those dried veggie snacks. Yeah, you do got to be careful. They can make you gassy. Yeah. Just saying. And when you're in a car, especially you thing in a car about it. with my wife, whew, can I have a bad time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> um, I think that my favorite thing was Trader Joe's really pulled through. They had these like mini packs of olives and artichokes. Like, Mm. you remember those? Oh yeah, like in in liquid. Yeah, they were like in liquid. So like when we got to our Airbnb and Lander, we had been kind of like snacking all that day. So I made like kind of a giant cheese board with like the artichoke, the olives, some cheese, Cheese. some apples, like just a smorgasbord. Um, and then things like jerky, mushroom jerky. I yeah, think chomps is a really good was, one. Yeah, vegan jerky is good. Like, Regular jerky is great. Um, popcorn, bananas, apples, clementines, avocados. Yeah. I wouldn't sleep on avocados. Those are another thing. You can buy them like super not yeah. ripe. They'll last throughout the trip, and it's like a really good way to get some diversity in your diet. Um, and then we had a lot of fun getting like – a special drink I feel like for lunch like we would try to stop and get like a kombucha if we made a stop at the yeah, store kombucha or sparkling, sparkling water. water yeah we really um, like try to stray away from soda so we had like coconut yeah. water I had like an emergency thing of cold brew so we didn't have to like make a coffee stop yeah. if someone driving like really needed a hit um and then Although obviously I power bars like gas station coffee so I know you do I would, I would yeah. splurge on that yeah um and then dinners. What did we really end up doing for dinners? 
Well, there were like two kinds of dinners because some really long drive days yeah, it was like through dinner yeah it's like you're driving through dinner and like i'm trying to feed will as he's yeah. driving or vice versa and like for those meals this is where trader joe's pulled through again like they have these canned grape leaves oh yeah so we would have like grape leaves hard-boiled egg couldn't be better in this moment especially if you had like a mustard packet you get from a gas station yeah. um and then like just veggies, right? That's when yeah. like those green beans really come in handy. And you get then you get like a pretty yeah. diverse diet in that dinner and you're like driving on the road and it's not too messy. And it's like yeah, it's easy. Yeah. And it's cheap. Cheap, yeah. Cheap because we could easily we easily could have spent so much more money. 40 bucks a night for dinner. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And over 20 24 days, days yeah. yeah what's 40 times 20 i don't really do public math but in this case i'll make an exception that's 800 dollars yeah. just on dinner yeah you know yeah and then like when we could we would also stop at a, a grocery store and get like a rotisserie chicken yeah, that, that would pull cool. apart and then i had like you know greens in our cooler so we could have like a salad with avocado yeah. chicken um you know i had some like olive oil and stuff that put on it then we also had like for places we had like you know i went to the like the natural grocery stores and found their pre-made stuff and made sure all the ingredients were like actual whole foods so i find like ramen packets with that i found like some indian food things which i don't really think we dove into the indian food maybe like one night yeah we brought a lot of like ramen and like yeah. kind of uh ready to go like go, like, like mac and cheese like bonza mac yeah. and cheese but we didn't really use it that much we didn't because really use the noodles. Well, a because we were driving a lot, like so we yeah. couldn't really heat that stuff up. And then even when we did stop, it was like you weren't really yeah. craving anything that hearty by that point of the day because you yeah. kind of are snacking on the road. Well, the whole also, time. I feel like some of those pre-made packets can be like really salty and like i'm not convinced they're really the best for you either so like well, they're I feel not like... and the ones you bought weren't as nice as the yeah. ones i bought yeah that's true yeah. yeah but i stand by it. you're right like they're not as good for you at all like yeah. if, and typically at the end of the day like a salad with some chicken or a hard-boiled yeah. egg on it felt better yeah and like that's the thing when you are eating that kind of like the good stuff on the reg Mm -hmm. you don't really like crave the bad stuff you don't want to eat the super salty bad stuff so it kind of like just like snowballs yeah what was the hardest part for you with food on the road when i mm -hmm. like had this concept going in the hardest what was the hardest part for me who didn't prep any of the food <laughs> hand-fed meals while driving let me think here <laughs> what was the hardest part um gosh i don't really have a good answer because it made it easy like how we prepared for this trip made the food part easy yeah like I did such a good job. Yeah. Let's just like toot my horn for a second. Yeah. But I think boop, boop. Yeah. I think the hardest part for you was not having Taco Bell. We did have... I had Taco Bell once. I didn't do it. It was a late night. It was. It was dark. It was like 10. And you really just needed like, a Baja Blast. I was like, dog I needed that Baja Blast so bad. I know you did. It's okay. I really did. And that's okay too. Like I think it's important to remember like... It is a hard yeah. thing on the road. And if you have a moment where you do like, you're like, dude, it's 11 p.m. I'm still driving. Yeah. I need something. Yeah. That's fine. But like support yourself the best you can. It yeah. really is attainable to eat well on the road. Yeah. It's pretty much what we you learned. You don't have to be like, I don't know, like a monk about it. Yeah. Like, we only bought food. We got that one time at Taco Bell. Yeah. And then on our way out, we we Had were in Jackson, in Jackson, Wyoming. Yeah. And got we were like, let's treat ourselves to nice sandwiches. And like... But that was like good food. That wasn't like Yeah, it was healthy food. food. But it was like yeah. the fact that we made it that long without stopping for food was Pretty amazing. Badass. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it was a good practice for me because it became easier as the days went on. Like, I'd find myself standing in the gas station after going to the bathroom and like, like, hmm, what kind of snack do I want? Or what kind of drink do I want? Or maybe I should get an energy drink. And nine times out of ten, maybe even ten times out of ten, I don't think I ever really like got bad snacks. I would just end up choosing like a, a soda water, like a sparkling yeah, drink. Yeah, sparkling water kind of became the go-to. No candy. No. Yeah. No chips. 
And I feel like you're even starting to integrate that. Like you just came home from a bike trip and you were like, I was on my way back and I almost stopped yeah. and got like a Mountain Dew or something. Yeah. Like you got well, yeah. I almost got like a Red Bull or something yeah. on a drive home from mountain biking from the mountains. And I decided to get a sparkly. Now I did get some corn nuts with it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're but mere mortals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah. Um, but like it wasn't a hard decision because like part of me like wanted like that instant gratification of like the caffeinated sweet energy drink but like I felt better about myself mm -hmm. and I know I physically felt better like by drinking or buying like the Perrier yeah and drinking that yeah because then your body's not yeah. crashing later you're not messing with everything yeah, with all that yeah. sugar and and caffeine yeah um, I just want to take a moment. I feel like we've covered food pretty well. And if you have any, like truly yeah. have this beautiful, beautiful list of all the food things. So get the PDF. I'll send it to you. Um, the other thing I want to take a moment of like, we were in the car for 24 days. So I was like, I need a little bit of like, I literally made like a car wellness kit mm. where I put like under eye patches, like, you know, to like, mm -hmm. or like face masks. Um, I even had this like witch hazel, um, like lavender face mist. So like if you're driving a long time and you need like a burst, a little pick me up, you could just like spray your face. I had like body wipes so you could just like feel like you're being cleansed. Mm -hmm. Um, those things I found like really helpful and just kind of made it. Fe made me feel better mm -hmm. on long days. I don't think you got to indulge in my face masks. No, but... I wasn't really driving with face masks. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in the past, I'm not opposed seeing... to a face mask. Yeah, like, no, they're, so they're great. Kinda, they don't really stay with the know, beard. Beard, beard the yeah. Face, yeah. Um, other things that I would recommend for like sleeping in different places, like if you're in hotels and stuff, brown noise oh. I think is like a lifesaver. Yeah. It's way better than white noise. And especially if you have a dog with you and you're in a hotel, it'll like drown out the noise of what's yeah. going on. So if your dog is a little more reactive to sounds, that's a really big help. Um, I think an eye mask is really helpful. I'm sensitive to light. So like you just never know what your situation is yeah. going to be. And then even earplugs aren't mm -hmm. a bad idea either. And I even had like a little lavender spray because yeah. again, like I wanted things to make me feel grounded and have a sense of home as we're like staying mm -hmm. at all these different places. And I had my, we had books too. Like yeah, I, books. I had my Kindle, which like is a really good sleep aid for me because mm -hmm. I'll read like 10 minutes and then it'll knock me out. Yeah. And I love the Kindle because, you know, they're a, many, I don't know if all the models, but a lot of the models have like backlights on them. Mm -hmm. You can connect them with your local library and check out books for free. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was just like a super nice way to unwind and kind of escape <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. And then to be honest, this feels like bad to say on a podcast, but like we didn't listen to that many podcasts on the road mm -hmm. and we listened to mostly audiobooks, which yeah. I think is way better on a road trip because you could go through like an eight hour driving day and be like, wow, I listened to seven podcasts today. Yeah. And that feels kind of like, ugh, like you get kind of stuck after a while, always trying to find a new one yeah. or like getting bored of what you're listening to. But audiobooks could just like continually hold so your longer. attention. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was a really good bonding experience for us. Like, cause you're taking mm -hmm. in this information. I mean, we were listening Together. to like podcasts that influenced like habits and eating and wellness while we were driving so i think that also like influenced yeah. the way we wanted to treat our bodies and minds while we were well, driving yeah, I mean, too the two like m most noticeable ones for the rich role mm -hmm. book finding ultra i think yeah finding that was ultra. just like super inspiring and motivational to learn about this guy's journey from out of shape and overweight at 40 to you know one of the best ultra endurance athletes in the world um, and then also Atomic Habits, which was like... James Clear, Atomic Habits. Yeah, which was really good. I mean, it was pretty in-depth and like there was a lot, but like the spark notes, if you just got like, you know, a couple bullet points from it. It's helpful. Yeah, it was super helpful. And that was cool to listen to together. Yeah. And then, you know, when, you know, we didn't listen to these all day because yeah. you can't really, it's hard to have something on all day, but then... You know, we'd pause it and reflect back on what we were listening to mm -hmm. and it made for good conversation and yeah it was nice 
That's really nice. You want to go on a road trip again? I'll go on a road trip again. All right, let's go back to Whistler. Let's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go to Whistler yeah. in a heartbeat, especially next summer. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Road. Yeah, Will was ready to keep going. Yeah, we, we came back to Virginia, and I was like, let's go to New England. Yeah. Let's keep on driving. So I don't think that this will be our last, mm-hmm. but I think this was our first, and I think the key takeaway I want people listening to hear is like, you can, you can really take care of yourself wherever you are. And no matter your situation, um, which I want to acknowledge privilege in that, but like you can, you can really take care of yourself when you're traveling, when you're on the road, it takes planning, it takes forethought, but it is something that can be attainable. And I think it ultimately enriches your experience so much more because I easily could have had many more bad moments. If my body and mind felt like trash, I would have been a less enjoyable person to be in a car for like 8 to 12 hours a day with. Not that every moment was perfect by any means, but like if you're feeling better, it's going to make your interactions better. You're going to enjoy the places you are. You're going to be more present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just going to be overall better. And it was cheaper. (laughs) Yeah, it was was cheaper. Yeah. 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 So I think we kicked ass. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. (laughs) Is there anything that you want to leave listeners with? Any any final tidbits of advice? I think, yeah, I think it's just like the little like 1% changes, the little micro choices Mm -hmm. you make, like just snowball and add up over the long run and just make you feel like a better, more whole person. And that's something that I'm learning in my early 30s. Okay, I knew this. I knew this all along, but it's something that I'm practicing in my early 30s, you know, as we get older and... I think it's really improved my quality of life physically and mentally. Yeah. Um, I, and it just, it, it, you don't have to like go out and like be like, okay, I'm going to like go online and find like a teacher and get this whole like framework and I'm going to stick to it. Like that can be like super overwhelming, but like you can next time you're at the gas station, you can buy some sparkly water instead of a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And you make that choice, you know, I don't know. 20 times in a year that's like a lot less sugar and bad stuff that you've put in your body um i think that's perfect advice i think that's a really good thing to leave listeners with is like we gave you a lot we're not saying like do it all have the most like holistic road trip travel experience find what pieces work for Mm -hmm. you and are going to help you feel most grounded and just start with one thing yeah and find one thing that works for you and go from there one step at a time one breath at a time yeah, and I just want to remind the listeners, and I'm not saying this from a position of authority because I, like, historically am miserable at making those types of decisions. But, You're doing so well lately, though. You really but are. But it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's, you know, small, easy decisions you can make that add up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. I love you. Thanks for doing this. Love you too, man. This was not as scary as I thought it was going to be. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I want to take a moment to thank our listeners and the members of the Dream Team for making this podcast possible. Truly, your support is what allows this podcast to exist, and particularly the members of the Dream Team support this podcast financially for as little as $3 every month, and they support the operating costs and work that goes into putting this offering into the world. So I highly recommend if you are able to join the Dream Team, there's a link in the show notes and you can choose the amount that is going to best honor you and the podcast. Um, And if you're not able to financially support the podcast at this time, you can still make a really big impact 